Today we're gonna talk about backpacking gear, which one is not too expensive, mostly on budget, but still keep you comfortable on the trails. Aloha guys, this is Nando from Hungaro Explorer and today we're gonna talk about backpacking gear. I didn't do a gear tip uh, or gear review video for a while because I was doing some other outdoor projects, but I decided it's time to show you guys what I usually use on my backpacking trips. Let me tell you a couple of tips before you get out backpacking. So it's really important that you research. You want to know where you're going to camp, how long is the trail, where you can filter water, what are all the logistics behind the backpacking. That's a really important thing and if you don't do it, you can get in trouble, believe me. I did that before and it's best to research. Second. If you go out backpacking, make sure you have your gear dialed in. What do I mean by that? I mean that you know how to set up your tent, you know if your sleeping pad is comfortable, you know how to pack your backpack. So basically, you wanna have a knowledge about your gear before you head out for two, three days. Why? Because in a backpacking trip, things go wrong. Doesn't matter how perfectly you set up, how perfectly you plan, something's gonna go wrong and then you have to have a plan B or you know how to fix little things. So research and make sure you know your gear. So the list I'm gonna show you guys today is the list which works for me. It's not the most updated gear but just to give you an idea how to find the balance between price, weight and comfort, right? I hope it's gonna give you a good idea how to pack for your next backpacking trip. All right, so let's start with the first and most in, one of the most important things on a backpacking trip, your backpack. My backpack of choice is, is a very old Hyperlight Mountain Gear 3400 Southwest pack, which is a 55 liter pack. I use it for more than six years. Usually I just use it on like two, three days backpacking trips. So it still holds up. It's a really great pack. It's perfect for me. I used to have an Osprey 65 liter bigger pack, which one, it was just too much for me. And I dialed down to a lighter pack like this HMG. And this was perfectly for me. So one of the other things I use, I love, this is like kind of a front pack. I don't know how to call this. It's from Z-Pack. This is like a nice waterproof material, which will actually go in front of my pack. So I can put extra extra gear here or extra weight so I don't have to carry it in my backpack. Usually I put my camera gear in here, the big camera, so it's easily I can pull it out, shoot the video or take a picture, right? So my sleep system consists of my tent. This one is a six moon design lunar solo tent, which is a single wall tent and uses a little 40, I don't know, 46 inch carbon fiber pole to set it up. So it's not like a freestanding tent. You kind of have to practice with it before you go out, how to set it up nicely. You can use a hiking pole with it, but because I don't use hiking poles, most of the time I got this little carbon fiber pole, which one works perfectly. This tent, it's actually budget friendly. It's around $200 and it's around two pounds. So I think this is the most budget friendly light <laughs> tent you can buy for this money. Usually these tents cost a lot of money, 500 and over. So this is a good tent for me and I love it. I didn't have any problem besides, of course, condensation. With the single wall tents, you always have the condensation problem, but it's really not a big deal. As stakes for my six moon design pack, I use these ones. This one, the MSR Groundhog 7.5 inch uh, stakes. They actually maybe too much <laughs> for most most of the times you don't really need this but uh, if you go out here some of the really windy ridges and you want to camp up in the let's see the Kolao mountains or the Vianai mountains sometimes the wind is picking up really hard so this will keep your tent safe second what is important your sleeping pad this one is not the lightest sleeping pad but i found it perfectly comfortable for me this is actually the climate static this is perfect for me because i'm a side sleeper I tried some other ones lighter ones they they were very noisy some of them were just like not comfortable enough so for me it's really important to get a good night's sleep and i'd rather add some extra weight than don't sleep well 
my pillow, which is another important little piece. It's another one from Climate, which is super light and you can inflate it. It actually has an X in it. It's kind of an interesting uh, pillow because what you do, you put your neck down and holds your neck in place. It's pretty comfortable. It works for me. I usually put my buff around it or a t-shirt and it's more comfortable. Okay, next thing on the list, after you find your nice sleeping pad, you wanna get your sleeping bag. I still use this uh, 45 degrees expert light. Back in days they called this an ultralight with just 1.3 pounds. Nowadays probably people say it's not really ultralight, but it still gets super small, pretty light, pretty warm. You know, in Hawaii it never gets lower than 45 anyway, so I never, I was never called in this one. I really like it. Okay, let's talk about cooking system and water filtration. Okay, so my go-to water filter is actually the Sawyer Squeeze, which one I changed it from the Sawyer Mini, because this has a much better flow, so I really like this one. And it's a perfect pairing with one of these, uh, one of these one liter bottles. You can just cook it on the top and you can drink out of it. But what I use to make everything even smoother because the Sawyer comes with this uh, small bag, which I really don't like. I use Knock, Sinok, I don't know how you pronounce it. But the cool thing about this is basically you can just have a wide mouth and you put the water, okay, you put it back up. And this end, you can just put the filter and you push out the water into the bottle. So it works perfectly. Okay, so because I love cooking, when I go out backpacking, I love to cook my soup at night. I love to just, you know, making food. It's just a very relaxing and calming uh, thing to do. So one of my favorite little thing to have is this Kobea stove. I don't know if you can see it. It's just a super light stove, which one goes up on, on this typical MSR guest and it works perfectly. One of my favorite little items in backpacking, which is very multi-use, it's a Snowpeak 450 milliliter titanium cup, which is probably not the, the cheapest, but still not too expensive. There's another company called Tox Titanium, and they they build, uh, they have all kinds of cups and dishes from titanium, which is a little bit cheaper than Snowpeak, but for some reason I just got stuck with this. I really like it. So I cook my soup in this, I, I cook my coffee, my tea, whatever I have, I use this. It looks a little bit small for a soup, but I think it works. And I just actually got like this little special made titanium top lid for it, so it works perfectly. It's like a little cook system, it's perfectly fine. Uh, don't forget to bring the lighter and some extra matches just in case. When you cook your food, make sure you have something to eat it with. I really love my Snowpeak titanium little spork. I have it for years and it always works. Depending where you go backpacking, really important. Find out what kind of clothes do you need. I usually just have this little bag and I don't bring any time more clothes than fits in here. Just try to dial down and just think what is really important. It's a must. Always bring a rain jacket, which one protects you from rain and wind. That's a really important thing. And, you know, the rest all depends on you. I'm not gonna get into what kind of clothes I use because this video would be too long already. So, I'm gonna get on going. Miscellaneous. Well, it's not really miscellaneous. They are still a must, but, okay. First aid kit. Well, when you go on a backpacking trip, how I said, a lot of things can go wrong. Always have a first aid kit with you. I bring just this pack. I have a lot of things in it. I even have a emergency blanket. I have a multi-tool. I have all kind of little things, which on, usually I never use, but I just have it. I have my sunscreen in here. So always take this with you. Then I have a little Ziploc, usually with toiletries, like some maybe biodegradable toilet paper. I have like toothpaste, toothbrush, and a hand sanitizer. You will need a flashlight or a headlamp. I think headlamps are just 
more comfortable. It's good to have one with the red lights, so when you talk with your friends, they, you don't blind them. Always have extra batteries. Talking about extra batteries, I have another Ziploc, which is actually have three extra batteries, just in case. And I have two other batteries for my cameras. Talking about cameras, I take this with me, the GoPro 7, what I usually film with. And I take my other old camera, the Panasonic. This too adds a lot of weight to your pack, but if you want to film, it's really worth it. You can take some great shots, but you don't really have to take these. If you use a lot your phone or you have a rechargeable headlamp or you, you know, want to recharge your batteries, you can just have this uh, battery bank. This is actually the power cord 10,000, so I can charge four times my phone with it. So it works perfectly. Or maybe you have a watch, a smart watch, and you have to recharge it. Thankfully, I don't have to recharge this one because this new Apex Pro is just amazing, has amazing battery life. I'm still using the same charge before I left two weeks ago on a trip, so it's awesome. So most of the items I showed you is basically a good balance between, you know, good price and the quality. You can bring down the weight of your pack much lower. My base weight is around 12 to 13 pounds. That uh, includes my cameras too. So you can go down definitely to 8 pounds, 9 pounds, 7 pounds. It just all depends how much you're willing to spend on a certain tent or sleeping pad. So most of these items I showed you guys, uh, you can go, if you live in Hawaii, you can go in the local store of Yuloha. I talked about these guys before and actually they just started a new YouTube channel finally. Maybe I can just put their link the, somewhere here and uh, check them out. I hope you find some valuable information in this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not yet. And see you guys next time. Aloha.